report on a newly detected variant of coronavirus raising concerns this morning. The New York Times reporting that the mutation is believed to spread faster, possibly weaken the effectiveness of the current vaccines. Joining us now to talk about this new variant and the vaccines and other efforts to stop the spread of COVID-19 is New York City Health Commissioner David, Dr. David Choksi. Commissioner, thanks for being here. Always a pleasure. Thanks for having me. It is a big morning to have you here indeed with this new information being reported. The CDC, let me be clear, says the information in the Times article is preliminary, still needs more review. But what can you tell us right now about this new variant? How much of it is actually of concern? Yes, thanks for the question, Dan. And let's start with the facts. Um, first, we know that all viruses mutate and change. Uh, that's what a variant represents. But second, not all variants are necessarily variants of concern, meaning some of them may be more transmissible, meaning they spread more easily. Some may cause more severe illness, but others may not. And that's the area where we do need additional study uh, on this variant that's being discussed. And the third fact is that we know what works with respect to interrupting the spread of COVID-19. We have to recommit to those core public health measures, mm -hmm. wearing our masks, washing our hands, keeping our distance, and getting vaccinated right. when it's your So UK variant, South African variant, Brazilian variant, would this now be considered a New York City variant? And you're mentioning it, things up of concern. Is this of concern to you? Uh, we need additional study to be able to determine whether it's a variant of concern. Uh, what we know about this uh, version of the virus is that it does have some concerning mutations, uh, but with respect to the real world effects, does it spread more easily? Uh, is it going to reduce the effectiveness of vaccines? Those remain unknown questions, and the science is far less established compared to those other variants like the UK variant. Yeah, and I just want to stay on this for a second because you said there are some things that are concerning. The Times article says public health officials were alerted on the variant. Were you given the information? And then what is of concern to you? Yes, we, we do collaborate with our academic partners. Uh, we're doing a lot of the specialized uh, genetic testing to be able to detect uh, both the variants that we know are concerning as well as new and emerging variants. I do wanna urge you know, all of our scientific colleagues, we have to work together. We have to share information in real time uh, for us to stay one step ahead of the virus. So what is of concern of what you know so far then? You said there are some concerning aspects of it. What would that be? Right, There's, there are particular mutations in uh, a part of the virus known as the spike protein. Uh, this protein is important because it determines uh, how it interacts with cells in the human body. And the particular mutations have been seen in some of the other variants of concern, particularly the South African and the Brazilian variants, um, which indicate that they spread more easily. Uh, and so that's why this is worthy of additional study, but it's premature for us to, um, to conclude that this is uh, similar to those other variants just yet. Has New York City been able to up their testing of variants, right? Just overall, not just this specific one, but overall when you actually analyze people who are positive to see if there's a variant in there? Yes, we have. This is something that's been a, an area of urgent focus for us over the last several months. We've tripled our capacity to do what's known as sequencing. Uh, that's the specialized genetic testing that I was referring to. Mm -hmm. We've gone from doing hundreds uh, of tests a week uh, to ramping up that capacity to thousands of tests per week. That's both at our own city laboratories and as I mentioned, collaborating with partners across the city as Understood, well. Understood, Commissioner. You know, and there's a lot of talk about the vaccines, right? Mayor de Blasio says the city is on track to meet the goal of getting 5 million people vaccinated by June. I just wanna play a quick clip and then get your reaction. Vaccinations given in New York City from day one, 1 million. 578,362 doses. And again, we're ready to take that up to a much higher level quickly so long as we get that supply. That supply, right? So New York City's vaccine supply could get a boost in the near future as the FDA is poised to approve the Johnson & Johnson vaccine. Once it is approved, Commissioner, how long would you say it would take for that supply to reach New York or too early to tell? Uh, well, first, let me start by saying this is very good news. We have another safe, effective, life-saving vaccine that is very likely to be authorized by the FDA this weekend. Uh, with respect to when it will actually come uh, to benefit New Yorkers, 
It could be as soon as later next week. Um, we have to wait for the federal government to work through its process over the next uh, two, three, four days uh, and give us additional information. But I'm hopeful that we'll be able to start getting this vaccine into New Yorkers' arms in early March. That is good information because you have been expanding the number of vaccination sites. I know that people have had trouble making appointments, right? So how many vaccine sites are up and running across the city right now? And has that actually been able to help address some, pro some problems that people have had making those appointments? Um, yes. So it boils down to supply and access. And as the mayor has said, our primary issue has been supply. We just haven't had enough vaccine uh -huh. uh, to get more New Yorkers vaccinated, which we urgently want to do. Uh, we are hopeful that the supply will pick up uh, over the course of March and into April, and the Johnson & Johnson vaccine will help with that, as we mentioned. With respect to access, we have been working day and night to add additional places, clinics, pharmacies, yeah. um, health centers, where people can get vaccinated. Uh, we now have over 400 uh, points of access across all of New York City, uh, and we're working to expand that every day. I, I want to just throw up that, that image we just had, if Dave, our director, can throw it up again, of all the numbers in the boroughs right there. Because, Commissioner, you see that Manhattan and Queens, they're in the hundreds, right? But Brooklyn, Bronx, Staten Island, they're very le far less. Brooklyn and Bronx also have a higher population. Is there an effort now and a push to get to areas, specifically in the Bronx, where we saw there was disparities at the get-go? Yes, one of our core commitments is to equity in uh, our vaccination rollout. Uh, and that involves um, ensuring that people, uh, particularly in the neighborhoods that have been hardest hit by COVID-19, uh, have access to vaccination. Um, Manhattan does have a larger number of pharmacies, particularly the chain pharmacies, uh, you know, with respect to uh, vaccine access points. And that's one of the reasons that the city, when we are thinking about where to expand our points of access, uh, we have uh, ensured that it's uh, Brooklyn, the Bronx, Queens, and Staten Island, where uh, we choose to cite as many of our access points as possible. Uh, understood. And while the vaccines is also on top of everybody's mind, there are the core values that you mentioned, right? Masking, social distancing. But there's this new information now that Mayor de Blasio is encouraging, as well as you are, to double mask. What is the behind the recommendation? How long do you think that'll actually last? Well, look, just as viruses evolve, so must our defenses. And that's why... Uh, the health department um, did update our mask guidance last week. The single most important thing remains wearing a mask consistently and properly, covering your nose and mouth, both indoors and outdoors. Um, but we also emphasized in this guidance, as you said, layering and fit. Mm -hmm. uh, and one of the ways that you can get both additional layers and a better fit is to double mask, particularly wearing uh, a cloth mask over a disposable mask. Um, that has now been shown through good, rigorous studies uh, that it provides additional protection. This is going to bring me back full wearing. circle, back to the variants, right? And not only the one that still needs more studies, uh, studies, but overall, double masking, will it protect against these new variants? And also, now that we've also discussed vaccines, do you believe the current process of vaccines will protect against these new variants? Yes, these are important questions as well. And here's how I think about it. Um, again, all viruses uh, mutate. You can think about it as a virus changing its fight plan in the middle rounds of a boxing match. Uh, the best thing that we can do uh, to fight back is to knock out the virus early um, in the first rounds. Uh, and in order to do that, um, it's taking those steps that I've mentioned. Uh, the double masking mm -hmm. uh, will help. Um, getting the vaccine when you're eligible will also cut off additional chains of transmission. And the less spread that's occurring, the less chances a virus has to mutate. So we all actually have a role uh, to play in keeping one another protected, um, not just against the coronavirus, but the evolution of new variants. Yeah, as well. I just want to be very clear because some, some people might be saying, should I even get the vaccine right now with the new variants coming out? Your answer, yes. Unequivocally, yes, it will protect you, particularly against severe illness. It'll protect you from getting hospitalized or having to go into the intensive care unit. 
Um, so, uh, yes, an emphatic yes. I, I went long with the interview, but I appreciate there was so much information to get to here, doctor. Also, I know you just uh, are on the mend from COVID. I want to check in on how you're feeling. I really appreciate that. Um, I'm uh, back and I'm fully recovered, and it gives me a chance to also emphasize that vaccination is important, uh, even for people like me who have had COVID-19 in the past. And the reason for this is that even though uh, we have a degree of natural immunity, we don't know how long that immunity will last. So uh, I will be getting vaccinated myself in the coming days. And I encourage anyone else who has recovered from COVID-19 to get vaccinated as well. And, and just, just because you just had COVID, how soon after you've recovered can you actually get the vaccine? You have to wait for at least uh, 10 days uh, and particularly until you're no longer experiencing symptoms from COVID-19. Um, you could wait for a little bit longer, um, but my simple advice is if it's your turn and you have um, access uh, to the vaccine, go ahead and get vaccinated. Understood. Again, sorry I went long here, but there was so much information. I really do appreciate your time and your voice, doctor. Thank you so much. I appreciate it.